hello again, and you're welcome. You nearly made it. It's just me and another talk, and then you're done. Right. Um, so this talk is about, I think you have to dim it somewhat. It is always a bit of an echo here. Right. Anyway. Um, so this talk is for large pages, or rather, or also known as buffer heads must die. So, what is it? What is we're trying to do here? Well, as you might or might not know, currently the Linux kernel has a limitation of the size of individual I.O. it can do. So currently, the Linux kernel can only do I.O. up to page size, meaning the size of the hardware, the CPU, the hard, uh, the hardware CPU. And um, that is, well, essentially hard coded in quite some crucial page, page, uh, subsystems. Most notably the page cache, but also block devices, some I.O. drivers, and so on and so forth. And the um, thing is that larger block sizes might actually be beneficial. Because, um, say, databases have this habit to actually, okay, more often than not, wanted to store more than, in our case, 4K. So um, some databases actually use an internal block size of 16K and rather want to store this atomically. And it also turns out from, um, well, uh, from experiments that nowadays the main di device latency comes from setting up the command, not so much from transferring data. Because, well, the interface is getting ever so faster, so in the end, the actual data transfer isn't the main issue here anymore. It is more setting up the command itself. So the less commands we are, we are having to send up, the higher the I.O. performance will be. Right. So why don't we just do it? I mean, in the end, it is just a number. We can just increase the number, right? Um, well, yeah, um, as I said, problem here is the page class, which is, well, surprise, acting on pages. Who would have thought about that? And um, the thing is that the, primarily the I.O. is actually driven from the page cache because ultimately it's the page cache who decides whether I.O. needs to be done. Of course, you always have the odd outliers like some databases who insist on doing everything on, on their own and we know better. You don't know better, other databases do. <laughs> Right. No, yes. So, um, of course, I mean, databases are pretty much in for direct I.O. and everything, but then um, not every database does it. There are databases which happily work with the page cache. And um, so, and the, the issue is that meanwhile, the Linux kernel has actually several interfaces how file systems could get the I.O. from the page cache. Um, there, there is the infamous buffer heads, then there is the struct bio, which is well known to anyone doing block layer stuff, and there's also something called IOMAP, which is, well, should ring a bell to everyone doing file systems. But then, the first uh, stumbling block here is that the page cache itself, because that well, actually needs to be converted to folios. So, folios, ooh, ooh, folios. This is the thing, um, the idea is as follows. So the problem is that within the page cache, we do have pages, well, obviously, but we unfortunately have several types of pages. So there's your classic page, which extends, uh, which carries data up to a page size. Well, no, actually, which carries data exactly of a page size, because that's actually a reference into the hardware. And then we have a thing called compound pages, which is, well, actually a list of pages, but you refer to that by just the first page. So you have to be aware that this is actually a page, but not just a page, but rather several pages. It makes it ever so tricky to work with them. And then there is something called, called huge pages, which mm, comes in two flavors. There's normal huge pages and the transparent huge pages. The normal huge pages actually are again a hardware thing, so the hardware has to support these sizes. Um, but for transparent rules in huge space, I guess you don't really have a hardware hit, right? Um, it could be of any size. Correct me if I'm wrong. No? Also hardware based? Also THP? It's also hardware based. All right. 
Right, okay, so, so also THP has also, so the, big, uh, the difference between, uh, between huge pages and transparent huge pages is that for huge pages you have to have a specific file system, that's the huge page file system, and transparent file system can be just selected directly without having to go by what means to get to it. All right, as I said, um, each of these pages have their own peculiar quirk, so, and in most cases you simply have to know which page you're talking to, so there has this infamous send page okay issue where and the block library suddenly, uh, su suddenly figured out, oh, blimey, we have to look whether this is a compound page or not. So hence this send page uh, OK came about. Because if we hadn't, um, we would actually causing a reference uh, miscount in the pages. So having said that, the thing what Folio does is it's basically just, well, an umbrella structure for all of these things. So um, a Folio could be any of these, and the Folio will tell you what it is, what, and what's more, a folio will do the right thing automatically with you without you having to worry about it. And the neat thing, what we are concerned with here, is that the folio can actually be larger than a page, because, as I said, it could also be a compound page. So if we refer to folios, we might actually be able to refer to data more than a page. And that obviously makes it very attractive for a large block size, because that's precisely what we need. We just want to have a reference to the data which we read, which in this case is a folio. So, as you might imagine, this is not an easy task, because it means that essentially every single reference to struct page has to be converted into a reference to struct folio. This was originally proposed by Matthew Wilcox in 2020 and has been a very prominent feature of, LSF, of every LSFMM ever since. Because, well, you might imagine this causes a bit of discussion. Just, I mean, we are just exchanging the most, uh, the most prominent structure in, well, basically the entire Linux kernel. What could possibly go wrong? And so we had lots of fun discussions about that. And, of course, it is still a hard task to do. I just did a stat there, a quick stat. Um, with the most recent kernel, we have about 8,300 reference to struct page, but only 1,800 reference to struct folio. So, as you can see, there's still some work to be done. And by the rate it's going, it will take us several more years before we finally have con converted everything. So, that's the folio thing. But we are actually not that interested in folios. We are more interested in the IO, which we could do on folios. So really, what we really have to look at, how does that reflect on the file systems? So as I said, we have several methods how IO onto folios, onto folios, or on, onto the pages or from the pages can, can work. The most ancient here is, in fact, buffer heads. This is... Incidentally, present in the Linux kernel since version 0.01. So, meaning the one of the very first releases ever. And has been in there since, well, since that time. So, basically, since the very beginning. Uh, this is basically a, rep a representation of, of a block sector on, the, on disk. So, it's, um, it's 512 bytes, and um, it is linked to a page. And as by the time when a certain Andrew Morton did that, um, as I found out the hard way, because I had been complaining about buffer heads being so horrible and awful, and why do we have it at all, unfortunately I had been complaining to Andrew Morton. That was not a good idea. And I found, me, I found, him <laughs> found myself then trying to convince him that his implementation was a bad idea. Hmm. But still, it was a lovely evening after all. Good. Right. Um, so, the thing is, as this predates the page cache by quite a long time, it actually does its own internal caching. So, you have some weird structures, some um, linked lists containing buffer heads, which is basically running in parallel to the page cache, because by the time they did that, there was no page cache. So, this is still in use by quite some file systems. And, um, the, most importantly, also the well, pseudo file system, the block device itself implements, is also based on buffer heads. And so, as I said, as the page cache it was implemented later, we have some sort of, well, duplicate caching going on here because one caching is with the page cache, but then there's another level of caching by the buffer heads themselves, which, is, which makes it ever so awkward. Right. And 
that is the problem. You were about to say something, or did I bore you to death with my, with my presentation? Uh, hello, I just wanted to say, so it's not quite true that, that we have two levels of caching, like buffer heads these days use block device page cache for caching, uh, so... Uh, like yes and no, but they both carry data, don't they? Yes, yeah, so, so you are right that there is a block device page cache yeah, to which the buffer mm. heads are usually attached there. Yeah. Uh, and then we have like file page cache, which in principle can alias the same blocks, although it shouldn't, although it shouldn't happen because usually you have either metadata, which is accessed through the block device page cache, or file data, which is accessed through this file page cache. But yeah, I agree, it's kind of, but this is not the problem of the buffer heads as such because they are just attached to one of these page yes, caches. Yes, it, it, is not, it is not so much a problem. The problem is that the structure itself is so deeply interlinked into the page cache that oh. removing is, is uh, I agree, it's, not something it's which, very deeply yeah. in, like interwoven in the page cache and in the handling, and especially in the file system handling of the page cache. Yep. So I agree that that's why it is difficult to deal with this. Exactly, and that is, and that is the problem here, um, that it has a reference directly onto the page. And also the page has a direct reference about on the list, actually, because there's a linked list over here. Why is this is anyway? So, and... Um, so the, uh, the page themselves has uh, the private pointer which links directly into the page into the buffer, buffer head, which will come to haunt us later on. Mark my words. So um, then there is the bio, which is the basic I/O structure, which was well done by Jens Axpo back in 2.5 in 2.5 versions, which is well actually nowadays the basic I/O structure for all device drivers. Um, the big advantage um, over buffer heads is that it can actually do vectorize I/O, meaning you can attach several pages to it, or, or even chunks of pages to it, so you can format the I.O. or gather the I.O. as you would like to. And you can do things like routing, so device number is just, well, mapping blocks back and forth. And um, it's also, uh, the day, once the data is in the bio, it's actually abstracted away from the page cache, so you don't have direct reference to the page cache anymore. So, um, this is, as I said, the primary structure for the block layer. And incidentally, nowadays, buffer heads are implemented on top of struct bio. So, I.O. from buffer heads will first be converted to BIOS before being sent off to the, to the devices, uh, to the devices themselves. And BIOS are actually also used by quite some file systems, meaning those who don't use, use buffer heads, unless you talk about GFS2, which seems to be used about every single structure which we have concurrently, so whatever. Anyway, so also used by quite some file system. But this is just well for reference because that's actually working reasonably okay. And then there's IO map. Or, well, Christopher, uh, Christopher having been going, going crazy. Um, that's what you get if he has too much time in his hands. So he just abstracted everything away. It's all working via callbacks and it all works magically. Trust me. And what's more, you can't prove me wrong because there's no documentation. Oh, thank you very much. So, which also means that the list of file systems which are converted are very, very sparse, and in effect, those file systems which he cares about, namely XFS, ButterFS, and SonFS, and none of the other file systems because he couldn't care less about other file systems. <laughs> the good thing is that we don't need to do anything about it because as I was completely abstracted away, it simply doesn't care which data you throw at it. It could be a cage, a page, it could be a folio, it doesn't care. So these are actually good. Once they are converted to IMO, uh, to IOMAP, everything is fine. And that's actually where, where we want to head for. So what is it uh, actually which we need to do to get to large IO blocks? Right. So as I said, well, we actually do need folios because that's the only way where we can reference more than one page. But that is actually not sufficient because if you had looked closely, the, 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 here, it said folio, and it's actually a union. So it w wouldn't matter even for a block for buffer heads. It shouldn't. It shouldn't matter whether it's a folio or a page. Unfortunately, well, it does matter because the buffer heads act on subpage granularity because they are referencing a block, which is well eight times less than a page. 
And um, if we now start working with larger pages, well, is it still sub-page granularity? No, it's actually super-page granularity. So we would have to invert the whole thing to not having the page, a single page reference to several buffer heads, but rather a, a single buffer head reference to several pages. <laughs> All right, no, um, this is a rather complex task. So, what can we do then? So we can, the easiest way is to, all oh, right, move everything over to, over to IOMAP because, as I said, then we're fine and everything will just, just work. Or we could update buffer heads, or we can just say, all oh, right, see what we get, kill everything else, and let's see where we end up. So, in an ideal world, of course, we would be moving over to IOMAP. But then the documentation isn't that great. One could even say non-existing. Um, um, Christoph obviously couldn't care less because he knows what's going on, so why should he document what he already knows? Um, Lewis Ch Chamberlain has started doing some documentation, but yeah, again, even he has the problem where should he get the documentation from? And the problem is if we start converting file systems, most of the file systems in need of conversions are actually quite old ones, like System 5 file system, Minix, SunOS, hmm, do we even get documentation for those? And what's more, do we care? So it might not be the best way, it might in the end just be a massive effort for, well, nothing. We could update buffer heads. And that was actually the well, rather disappointing outcome of the discussion we had at LSF, where Joseph Bartsch said, yeah, pff, just update buffer heads and then the problem is solved. Yeah, but what is it actually we need to do for updating buffer heads? We could go trivially converting it to folios, and that would be a conversion. But then, as we've just seen, well, it already is converted to folios, so that would be trivial. But Experience shows it doesn't work. So that's clearly not what's required. Or we have to indeed look at the subpage tracking and would need to revert the subpage tracking to suddenly be a super page tracking, and which means that we have not having a single pointer pointing downwards, but rather a pointer, to, a pointer pointing upwards and several pointers in the page and block. Uh, not the way to go. And well, it's a term right? Okay, so I don't think actually it's that complex. Like, if you have, uh, like, we can have the buffer head point to the folio, yeah, which is essentially the large page that's going to be there. Uh, and then basically what each buffer head needs is essentially, you know, it works just fine, for example, with 64K pages as, as well, yeah, on, yeah. on PowerPC. So, so if, if what only needs to be done is that you know we are now pointing to the folio and uh, each buffer head nodes knows its offset within the folio and the length which is the block mm. block length mm -hmm. whatever it is we don't really care about the uh, the relation of this size to the page size we, what we just need is a way to submit io when we have the folio and offset in the folio and that can get a bit iffy because, like, we at this point cannot attach folios to BIOS, yeah? But, um. but if we get this done, uh, like, a reasonable, easy way, how to attach, like, sub-interval of a folio, which is possibly spanning multiple physical pages, to the BIO, then that's basically what needs... Then the rest is really, like, no-brainer in the buffer head. In an idea world, yes. It's the tiny wee snacks which will, which will get us. Because there are so many references where the code just knows, oh, I will always have more, for, more buffer hats than, than pages, and hence I can iterate across the, um, the offset by page size increments and do stuff there. So, um, yeah. yeah. You mean like outside of the buffer head code? No, it's inside the buffer head code. Buffer.c, plenty of loops in there, which are incremented by buffers uh, by page size. Hmm. Okay, I have friends. to have a look. I, I nah, don't remember. Don't, don't, don't. 
<laughs> no, have, um, so okay. this is, but um, yes, it is possible, but these are really, really incremental steps because there are so many corners where essentially the page size is hard coded as the limit of a page. That is, uh, and it doesn't really say. So you, literally, you have to look for every location where it says page size, whether that is the correct reference there. So that is, yes, the, you can do it, but it's really, really annoying to do so. You have made me curious. I'm going to look into Oh, the yes, please, please, please do. <laughs> so, um, or we could do the lossy conversion. You could say, all right, those files which, which we care of are converted to IOMA. Consequently, if we're, if we're switching off buffer heads, we wouldn't lose anything because all the file systems which we just switched off, we didn't care about. So what are we complaining? Right? Right. Uh, yes, that was, of course, Christoph Helving's telling. Um, so it's, again, not that easy. And so we actually had a patch doing exactly this. So there was a, he introduced a contract option for, uh, for buffer heads, and then you could just say, buffer heads, no, and file systems would be gone. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, it was a bit of an oversimplification, but anyway. He will continue that road, and let's see what's happening on that front. Meanwhile, I thought about, oh, it would be grand to test this in a VM, right? Then we could just, well, have a VM and test things out. How would, how would, would it feel with large pages? Um, okay. Then it turns out, yeah, the reason why there's a config option is that buffer heads and IOWAP are actually incompatible, because both are using the private pointer of a page. So, and there is no type checking, it's just a void pointer. So, you know what is in there. Sure. And um, that is now a problem if you're working with block devices and if you're, say, a file system. Because while you can do your own mapping and establish your own mapping and work with your own mapping, this clearly can only work once you've established your own mapping i.e. before you and after you read the superblock and figured out what is going on here. But reading the superblock requires you to touch down onto the block device itself and use the block device routines. And if that is using a different mechanism than your file system, you're kind of stuck because as John uh, neatly outlined, there shouldn't be any aliasing ongoing. So if you read a block from the, file, from the, pair, from the block device, you will be getting a page, but that page will be the same page you'd be reading from the file system. And as there is no aliasing, it will be actually the same struct page. So what is it again your private pointer is pointing to? Will that be that one from the, uh, from the, uh, buffer, uh, from the block device or that one from your file system? Who knows? So, yeah, yeah. again, one can try, but I'm not that confident. And um, then, as I said, I wanted to boot a, a, a VM. I figured, hmm, I might want to need UEFI. Because, well, I'm booting UEFI, and UEFI requires VFAT to, for the boot, for the ESP, for the boot partition. So if I switch off everything which is not supported, that would include switching off VFAT support, which hmm, will make booting ever so complicated because it will be stuck as it can't mount the VFAT file system. All right, I said, right. It can't be that hard to convert it to IOMA. Turns out, mm, not that hard, but mm, also not a task which you can undergo lightly. That's why I said you really want to have the file system documentation, documentation before and attempting something like that. Because you have, literally have to rewrite the accessors how to get to the data on the file system. You really should know what is going on and, and which data you need to look at. But anyway, I got a patch which allowed me to read from the file system, so it must be good, the, the patch. Who needs writing? We see. Um, it's still under testing, and uh, once it's done, I'll be sending over to Helping Hands, hello, Jack, um, to um, give it a glance and see whether I messed up or not, or rather, where I messed up. And once that's done, then I should be able to boot again. And then I can continue with, with testing, because in the end, well, that is really only part of the story. Because, well, re larger block sizes actually require you to have a device with a larger block size, which clearly you don't have. 
because if you had it, you couldn't boot Linux on it, as Linux doesn't support it. So chances are you won't have it because Linux, boot, Linux boots on your device. So what do we, how do we get to this over this initial hurdle? Someone um, converted BRD, that's the, um, the RAM disk driver, or one of the RAM disk driver, to actually expose large block sizes. Because, well, it's, as it's completely made up, it's just a RAM disk displaying pages, you could just tell them, oh, you know what, allocate not just one page, but rather a bunch of pages. Like a bunch of pages in block size, which I, which I told you to do. And that worked reasonably, quite easy. You literally just have to change the, uh, the, um, the order of pages, which is allocated in the driver, and then, boodoo, you got it. And that turned out to be a really neat test case because you can just load the, dri load the block driver and if it loaded, things work. If it didn't, right, you messed up and you have to get back to, uh, to the drawing board to get your patches in order. So that was already quite good. Someone from Samsung already did tests with that and surprise, surprise, it was faster when switching to larger block size. So our initial assumption was actually true. And the good thing is that you can also use it as a backing device for a target, say for an NVMe target, which should allow you to test the entire NVMe stack to see whether the NVMe stack supports large block sizes too. Again, the spec size, uh, says it should, but as no one could test until now, we see whether the should is an is or continues to be a should. And so, as I said, this is, there still is some testing to be needed. So, to recap, why again do we do this? I mean, several years of work doing for what again? Yeah, so the thing is, databases really like 16K IO. And they even proposed a patch set, or rather modified the SCSI spec and the LME spec to allowing them to write, to do 16K atomic writes. So, if we were supporting 16K block sizes, this whole issue would be gone because 16K atomic writes would be the only way how they could do I.O. That would be a, ni a nice takeaway. And as the, even the initial patches has, uh, have proved, we, we will be able to do more efficient I.O. by just using larger pages. And of course, it'll make the, make the driver vendors happy because suddenly they can just reduce on the internal overhead and expose a lar larger capacity. This is the good side. The not so good side is that, hmm, how was it again with page fragmentation? Currently, we are guaranteed to have a single page unless we completely run out of memory by the fact that that's the smallest unit which, which we can allocate. If we move over to large block sizes, we ca literally cannot allocate a single page, but we have to allocate the pages in, well, the order of the, of the, files, of the underlying file system, which might or might not increase fragmentation. We simply don't know at this point, because as soon as you allocate a page from a region or from a mapping which is block blocked by a file system or a block device which has a larger page size, you, the only page you can get is a large page. So there you really cannot have fragmentation because, well, you can't have misaligned pages. It's simply, you can, simply cannot allocate them. But other regions which are not backed by this file system do not have this, this constraint. So there you might incur a fragmentation. So really, we have to see where we end up, whether the fragmentation increases, might, or might not, who knows. This is really something which we only can tell once we test. It is impossible to guess at that time. But if we never test, we would never know. So, and that really is the end of it. Thank you very much. Yes. Hey, Hannes, you're aware of uh, there's a flag in IOMAP for buffer heads, but that's primarily for data and is used by GFS2 only. But it is making a bridge towards buffer, from IOMAP to buffer head. But I know it cannot be used for metadata, but still. Well, as I said, if we had documentation, it would tell me what this flag is meant to be. Okay. But as we haven't, it could be literally anything. Well, it's there on the head of files. But yes, I, don't, I would say it is not that explicit. <laughs> yes. No, certainly not. <laughs> Any more questions? Right? So thank you very much again, and enjoy the last talk.